Hi, and welcome to the Faith Family Church Podcast. For more information about our church and who we are, visit our website, ffcackworth.com. Enjoy the message, and thank you so much again for listening. I have some question, and I'm asking, please pay attention. Sorry about my accent. If you do not understand English very well, my English. It's not my problem. Do you understand where you are? I just returned now from Israel. I have been in Israel for 30 times. God doing something in this land. Few years ago, a friend of mine, he moved from Ukraine and started church. He walked from door to the door, from village to village, from uh, street to the street. He was looking for a person who will come to Christ. And he found one lady. She was very interested to attend a church. She stayed in church for two weeks, and she left. His heart was broken. It was a few years ago. Now when I preach in Israel, eight people get saved. Next service, six people get saved. In Galilee, we have 1,000 people came to our crusade. Nearby Dead Sea, 10,000 people for open crusade. One church baptized in water, 130 new believers in one year, 2017. Time came for Israel. I will be in Israel next two weeks again. And June again. Because Knesset and President, Prime Minister invite us for a breakfast with him. I will be in July again in Israel. I just return now from Ukraine and other countries. I just get my doctor degree, second one, from Ukraine and return. I was very tired to travel, have a meetings, crusades, preaching, working. But do you understand where you are now? You are in holy place. You are like in New Jerusalem. Why? Did you see face? No, I don't see face. Where is just my name? Face family. Face family. And God brought you to a very unique place. This is excellent area. This is excellent and strategic place. Here. And also, for you is a great opportunity to invite one person per month. And you can say, hey, can you come? Because you will see Donald and Melania. As they can see, hey, this is White House. You have great opportunity, said Donald and Melania, come. They will be happy to come. Did you pay attention about this? They can say, oh, oh, president coming. Next, last month, I have chance to be together with President Trump and with Mike Pence. When we met Mike Pence, my wife just uh, was sitting on the front and he come down, came down from uh, his puppet after speech and my wife just shake hand to him. And she said with very strong German, uh, a German accent, my accent, said, my, uh, Dear Vice President Mike Pence, we love you. We are from Ukraine. We pray for you. We are asking, can you return Bible to schools? Yeah. Here, just last month. Yeah. If God be willing, next, uh, in May, I will be again with President and Vice President. We have a dinner, special dinner in Washington, D.C. I don't want to talk to you about a lot of politics. I'm not from politics. I'm just telling you something, ladies and gentlemen. We live in last days. Last year, I almost died. Because I was in place when they started shooting me. I was arrested in one country. Because I'm working now with organization. And we take care of Matthew 24, 14. Because when disciples came to Jesus and asking Jesus... Can you tell us your sign? When are you coming back? What he said, it will be war and war. Nation against nation. Country against country. And last sign is, gospel will be preached to every nation for witnessing. And I will come. Ten years ago, it was only uh, 9,000 big uh, nation. Just from 50,000 and above. And in 10 years, only 6,000 nations never heard the gospel. And I'm working among 200 nations, present 50 million people. 
And last year I spent 140 days in overseas. My 13th grandchild was born, I was in Ukraine. 12, I was in Tel Aviv. 11, I was in Jakarta, Indonesia. You know, somebody said, are you crazy? I'm sorry, in Ukraine now war, still war. I brought some American pastors to East. And during my message, they started bombing. But 90% of people came to Christ. And God helped us open new churches in this area. We are working around the world, take care of many nations. And I'm living again, I'm going again, because I want to see people be saved and back heaven, because hell for devil, but heaven for us. And we have to do something for Christ. We live for short life on earth. But God called us, follow Him, take it our cross, what my son said. Our cross, His cross, and follow Him. And now we are in this area. We are here, and I'm living again. I want to go and go. You know, just example. Country Azerbaijan. Maybe not, not many people understand where is Azerbaijan is. Azerbaijan nearby Georgia, Armenia, Iran, Russia. In Azerbaijan, 10 million people. When I came first time and met with some people, lady came. Very intelligent lady. She was 50 and above. She was a minister, assistant to a president. And she came to me and she said, Pastor Slavik, can you help me? Now economy collapse. Big problem in our country. But I want to bring the gospel to my nation. Because in 10 million people, do you know how many churches? Only five. 0.001% Christian. You don't understand what is this. Only five churches for all country. And she said, I want to bring the gospel to my nation. What nation, I asked. She said, Talish. I said, I never heard about this nation. And she said, my nation live on the mountains. No Bibles. No telephone, no uh, uh, radio, nothing, no television, no internet. Only if we can bring in something, what we can make it, what we can write in, what we can tape in. You know, I want to print some magazines, some brochures and Bible for my language. I ask how many people live from your name, uh, nation on, uh, uh, on the mountains. And she said 180,000 and 200,000 in Iran. And I'm first Christian. I started crying. We sent money, we support them, we help in, and now they have churches. Second, Karakal, Pakistan, in central of Uzbekistan, 30 million people. Now, 800,000 Karakal Paks, very strong Muslims. Nobody preached to them. We sent it missionaries, we opened churches, and now over 2,000 young people, very strong young people worshiping God. One church, when I came, I remember 10 years ago, I attended this church, it was only 15 older babushka, ladies, with a covered head. Now I came, I was shocked. I opened the door in this church nearby Afghanistan, and pastor from Iran, in Central Asia, 800 young people worshiping God. We were in Dushanbe, Tajikistan, next to Afghanistan, north of Afghanistan, very dangerous area. Nobody can go, nobody can preach. Our missionaries from this side, former Soviet Union side, they are living, they are crossing border because they do need visa. They, they speak Farsi language. They understand how to deal with this nation. But to come here to this place is not easy because 94% is the mountains. They have to order private jet to come in. And they said, yes, we need your support. We need your money. I was sitting on the, in the restaurant in this side of the table with American people. And the other side, missionaries, they're working in Afghanistan. And they told us in Afghanistan, 48,000 mosques and zero evangelical churches. When five people worship together in one house, one house, 10 people in other house, 15 people in other house, one house did not know what happened in other house, secretly, danger. But people coming and asking, to come to Christ, who can preach, who can tell them about salvation. And people said, we need your support. Tell American people, we need your support. But tell them, if support do not come, tell them we cannot stop for preaching. I returned to Ukraine two weeks later. When I married some couple, my friend's son was married. I bled them and provide wedding. And during lunchtime, I received a message by cell phone. 22 hour missionaries returned to Afghanistan and they cut off head. They laid down life for gospel. 
Last year, 90,000 people die for the gospel on earth per year. You do not understand what happened. I just returned now. I meet in Georgia with all leaders from Asia. I was in Asia and when I came in, just I saw how my mom stay by knees and crying, shouting, Lord, deliver our father from jail. Five children stay behind her and pray to God because he is in jail for three years and he must stay two more years. People pay price to bring the gospel to their nations. Now we live in America. Now it's time for America for revival. Now America have to do something because God using America for many nations. God brought me here when Tommy White was a pastor. And before year of 2000, we were working together to open Ukraine, Belarus, former Soviet Union, 200 new churches. Your church in world. I was the first one who attended this church. And Tommy White with the Assembly of God Church here helping us to open 200 new churches in Ukraine. And I preached in some places in Zaporozhye. And after, after a, a crusade, one man came to me and he said, Slavik, thank you very much. I asked for what? He said, because I was a former police officer. And when God saved me, I just leave my position and I started a church. I became a Christian. In three years, there was only 40 people in my church. But when Tommy White invited me, have an interview with me, and he invited me to be in your school after Bible school. I returned to my church. When three months I attend every single day. And people came from America and teaching us how to work and open new churches. And he said, now in two years I have 700 people in this church. You do not understand what happened in Ukraine. Because in Ukraine in 1992 I attend first pastor's conference. Only four pastors came from all entire nation. 400. Now 32,000 churches in Ukraine. Do you know what happened and why? You don't understand what happened. I remember when I grew up, I was a child. So many times principal invited me to the front saying, look at him, he's still a child. But he is American spy. Who am I? American spy? I'm only nine. Why is he said I'm American spy? Because we received Christianity from America. In 1920s, two missionaries moved from America to Ukraine and started to preach. And now we receive Christianity. My father, my grandfather accept Christ because of America. Yeah. One time when I brought Jensen Franklin to Ukraine. And he was preaching to 15,000 people. And I asked for them, can you open your first page? You do not understand young people. When I was, I grew up, I started to preach when I was 14. I asked pastor, do you have a Bible? I love people, I love to preach. My pastor said, no, we have only five Bibles for all congregations, 300 people. You do not understand when police will come to your home and he catch a Bible to your home. You have three years in jail or five years in jail. But I asked for people when we preach to 15,000 people, can you open first page? Can everybody open first page? I asked him, what did you find it? Everybody shouting, printing in America. I said, did you see what America did for you? You do not know about America. It was a communist propaganda in two television channels, no more. They tell it every single day, America is a danger country. America is an enemy to us. And now America sent humanitarian help, medical supplies, financial help, Bibles to you. They love you so much. They pray for freedom, freedom in Ukraine. And I asked, do you have a Bible open and they shout in printing in America? I sent America sent Bibles to you. But now America needs your return. Can you pray for America? You have to see it. How 15,000 people lifting up their voice. And Jensen Franklin with his team fell down by knees and weeping before God. Because we pray for revival in America. I know in the next five years, revival will come to young generation. And so many miracles and signs will come to America. America shall be saved. Because America is a great nation. And God using these American people for around the world to bring in gospel. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Pastor, why you shout so much we are not deaf? Be quiet little bit. I'm sorry. 
I'm not from cemetery. I'm not from Hollywood. I am from Calvary. Jesus said. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Honey, I love you. Mm -hmm. No, I love you. Can you answer? I love you too. Mm -hmm. Evangelist from Ukraine shouting hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Can you repeat with me? Hallelujah. hallelujah. I like it. This is how I feel I'm home. Now we just see my little bit of presentation. And I'm going to speak. I am sorry. Somebody said, you know, 12 o'clock you have to say amen. If you can say five minutes after 12, you can preach to the wall. But it's not here. I feel your spirit. I have some message in my heart. I'm sorry, do you understand my English? I'm a little bit tired because, you know, just I'm, I'm preaching in Russian, Ukraine. I'm preaching so fast. You know, in television, because I have television from Tel Aviv, 135 nations. And, you know, I have maybe over 350 television programs in, on the internet, in Russian language. But uh, I'm speaking very fast. I'm sorry, you know, just maybe you do not understand. But because i never been in school. When I, learned to, when I came, moved to America here, I learned first five English words. Okay, no problem, Coca-Cola, hallelujah, amen. I know I have just only maybe half hour and we are going to pray, but <clears throat> I have a classic message. It's maybe not similar to our celebration of Palm Sunday, but maybe somebody need to hear this message today. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday when Jesus coming from the mountain. And they glorify his name, Asana, and next few days crucify him. Do you see how heart of human being, men and women, change dramatically and very fast. But it was a promise and program and plan from heaven to send Jesus and die for us. He loved us before we met him. And he brings good news to us. Before we ask him. And we will be, must be very appreciate for everything what he does in our lives. Thank you very much for Pastor Donald, his first lady. And thank you very much for all people and all your team and your assistance and your prayers. And I'm asking to you. I have been in more than 90 countries. I was preaching in Australia or Japan. Singapore or Indonesia, Africa or South America, Europe or Ukraine. So many pastors, bishops came to me and asking, can you help me and pray for me? I asked for what? They said, because devil attacked my family. Devil attacked people who are preaching, who stay on the front. And devil don't like it. Devil wants to destroy it head. But they need your support. Please pray for pastor, for his family. I'm asking please bring in people to Christ. Because it's not his job to invite people to church. It's your job bringing them to, to the church. But his job is stay by knees and asking for the word of God and giving food to them. You have to pray and touch them by Holy Spirit. And your job is go to your neighbor, knock on the door and asking, hey, can I come in? Can we drink a tea? Can we talk about something? Can you come with me to face church, family church? And you will see what's going to happen. I'm teaching everywhere, bringing one person per month to the church. In a year, only 12. It's not much. But you will see from 100 and bring in 12, it will be 1,200. And you have huge property to, bring, to build a biggest sanctuary. And God will provide everything. Just make step by faith. Now time for America. Don't miss it. Because nobody knows what's going to happen in the next four years. But now God give for you great time. Revival coming to America. Believe me. Number after, after China and India. America number three unsaved nation. 
Three, number three. Because in America, over 300 million and 200 million never attend the church. You have big field. Some men came to me and said, Slavik, you're preaching to 100,000, 150,000 people in one place. You're preaching to tens of thousands in one single service. How I can preach? I said, okay, question is, did you preach to your neighbor? He said, no, my neighbor did not know I'm a Christian. I said, please go and witness first to your neighbor. After, maybe God will give a microphone to you to preach to other one. I remember when man Mark Rutland is a top speaker in America. He shared with us his story, what happened when he was a young. And God sent him to some village to preach. He was driving for 12 hours. When he came, it was late. He came a half hour late. After worship, they were walking and just looking and watching at the door. He did not show up. He walked to the window and he accounted 12 people inside. And he said, Lord. I'm tired to travel it for 12 hours and preach only to 12 people. Why you sent me here? And Holy Spirit said to him, Mark, if you are very big to preach to 12 people, you are very small to preach to 12,000. You catch a point? You must have fire inside of you to witness it for one person. And God will open door for you to preach to multitudes. And God will use in you to do something. Did you saw when Billy Graham passed away? Nobody never honored his, his ministry like now in America. It's a funeral service in White House. Leaders sitting, talking about him, sharing, all world watching. Why? He was a president, prime minister, senator, congressman. No. He was a humble man of God, but he was the highest than all presidents together because now he is in his glory in heaven and he wait for his rewards in heaven crowned with diamonds because he did something for Christ. It's best of the best what we have on earth. Do you not agree with me? If you agree, say something. I am from tradition church. In my church, nobody shouting. In my church, nobody walking. In my church, nobody used a tie like your senior pastor. Because pastor said, Slavik, only communist people use a tie. But Christian, no. When you put tie to your neck and tie show direct to hell, what's going on? <laughs> when communists collapse, I put tie like this. I said, now my tie show direct to heaven. Genesis 32, 24. Because not many people remember my messages. Genesis 32, 24. Then Jacob was left alone as the man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not previous against him, he touched the sock of his hip. And the sock of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go, for the day breaks. He said, but he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. I want to share with you now very briefly about five steps in our Christian lives. People do not understand what, speeds, what steps means, especially young generation. I know from American statistics, young people study and spend four hours per day with a cell phone. What cell phone can teach you? But Ukraine now beat America because statistics from Ukraine, four and a half hours young people spend with internet. I remember my ages... I spent four hours with Bible. Now I can remember from child what I read when I get first Bible. Bible is a life. But very smart computer. Very smart. I do not against. I'm not telling something wrong. It's a smart computer. Especially stupid Google. Because one time when I preached to Canada to 1500 people and I mentioned... And pastor immediately opened cell phone. I mentioned about, can you ask Google what is eternity? 
And he puts, you know, voice. Boom, voice. Voice, what is eternity? And Google, boom, boom, running, 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 and answer. I do not qualify to answer what is eternity. Google do not know what is eternity. Because eternity when started to be with Jesus and never, 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 never comes end. And Google do not know what is eternity. But you know, I know, eternity with Jesus forever and ever. Yes and amen. You see, it's my point, Ukrainian point. Google, Google not understand, but you do. Five steps. First step call alone. God said to Jacob, Jacob, take it your family and return to your home. And he did. He followed his rules, his command. He took his family and he journeyed his home, to his home. And before he arrived to his destiny, he sent ambassadors to his oldest brother Esau. And he was very smart because he was a Jew. He sent gifts one after one on the distance, with distance, one by one. This is for my brother. This is gift for my brother. This is present for my brother. What is this? What is this? Who are you, who you are? I belong to Jacob. I'm his slave. But he sent some gift to you. Take it, please. One after one. When ambassadors returned to Jacob, they told Jacob, we saw your brother. Oh, he's coming to meet me. Yes, he's coming. I was very, I'm very excited to meet with my brother. He's coming. But he's coming with flowers, worship team. Musical instruments, candies, presents. No. He's coming with 400 soldiers. Huge army in that time. What, 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 what you said? He's coming with army and source? Yes. When he get this information, his heart was broken. He was very afraid, very scary. And he said, if my brother will come and try to kill and destroy my family, I have to do something. And he, when he will be here today, I can give a title for him as a marshal or general of the army. He was very smart. He said, if my brother will come and try to destroy my family, I have to save part of my family. And he divined his family and sent it one part to the wilderness, one part to the mountains, and one cross the river. I think preparation was very nice, excellent. It was a strategic vision for a general of the army. And Bible said, Jacob left alone to the mountain. He tried to sleep, but dream do not come yet. You cannot sleep. What happened with Jacob? And Bible said, he feel he alone. He left alone. So many now young people left alone. Do you know why they feel alone? Because now in last days, they missing one a component of joy. And they are looking how to fulfill joy into their hearts. And they are looking for drugs, sex before marriage, amoralities, and other stuff. Because they are missing joyness. This is a component what they will try to steal in. And they feel alone. But they don't want to be alone. They call to somebody, let's go to ice skating, let's go to McDonald's, let's go, 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 go very fast. You know, because they don't want to be alone. Let's go and watch television. Let's see something. Let's do it together. People feel alone. One man in East, far east in Russia, he was maybe 18. He ran outside with a big gun. And mom followed him and shouting, Pavel, Paul! It was too late. He put, put gun to his neck. Bam! In his body was death. Because he feel emptiness inside. Vacuum inside. He feel alone. Ladies and gentlemen, I was arrested so many times. I spent some time in jail. But I never feel alone. Because Jesus is inside of me. When we walk with Jesus, we do not feel alone. But Jacob left alone. What we are doing when we are alone? are alone. What we are doing. We feel emptiness. So many people now said, we are under press depression. 
we translate as Ukrainian people depression like devil press. Devil press. Christian people have depression. I am sorry. No depression for us. And Jacob feels something. Inside he feels alone. What he did? Second step called wrestle. He started to wrestle. You know, we have in what word, one word wrestle, two means to understand in wrestle. One, when you fight with somebody. Second one, read in New Testament. New Testament said, Jacob, pray with tears and wrestle with God. In other words, wrestle means pray very hard. Pray to God. Second step, pray. Why I am holding microphone? Why I am preaching with my all six brothers, ordained pastors? One, my brother passed away when private jet crashed in Alaska from two kilometers above on the front of his wife. And she was pregnant with number eight child. He passed away. He was a missionary in Siberia. All brothers is a pastors. My mom passed away a long time ago. My two sisters in church. So many times I ask, Daddy, he's still alive, over 80s. He's now. Father, under communist regime, only one family belongs to Christ in our village. 800 children, I was only the first one who belongs to Christ. How through these difficulties, through this life, persecution time, you brought us to Christ. And he told me, take his seats, my son. Let me tell you a secret. Very simple. When you and your brothers and sisters went to the bed for sleeping. I went to the kitchen with your mom. We closed the door. We stayed by knees and stay all night until breaking the day. And pray for salvation in this country. Why you are now belongs to Christ. Very simple. One time I pray all night for my children. In December 31st, I said to my wife, Natasha, don't touch me, please. I close the door in my office. I stay by knees and pray one hour per child. One hour for me, one hour for my wife. It's not easy. Jacob wrestled with God. Pray. For how long? Five minutes? I'm sorry. I'm not joking. I'm not a joking man. But sometimes when I visit American people, and American people in the morning said, thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful Starbucks coffee. And I have to run for my job because it will be traffic and I will be late. God bless this day. Amen. Bye-bye, honey. Honey, oh, I'm very tired. Okay, I'm going to sleep. Good night. Hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. I'm sorry. You want to see revival? You want to see revival? Just one week ago, I spent over 20 hours in jail. Six in the morning, I was praying. Just returned. I was thinking I will stay in jail for six months, but I'm here now. God brought me here. Just one week ago, I was in jail, arrested. Why? Because I have to speak in this church. And God knows. He has to bring me here. One time I went to Asia. And I tried to talk to my friend. He's a good pastor. We are friends for many years, for over 30 years. And one time when I came, I want to talk to him. And his wife said, please, Slavik. He said, don't disturb him because he's praying. I went to other place for preaching. I returned next day. I, I want to talk to your, your, your husband. No, no, please don't disturb him. He's praying. Third day, I was able to talk to him. And I asked, Pastor, how long you pray? He said, now I pray eight hours per day. I asked, why? Do you have some problem at church? He said, no. I have only 40 elder people. Honest people. Nice. Do you have some problem in your family? He said, no. Slavic, I have only one wife. And no children. Why you pray for eight, per eight hours per day? And he said to me, do you know, when I see by window, my neighbor, he's a Muslim. He returned home like this because he drinking too much Russian alcohol, vodka. And he said, I pray for my Muslim neighbor. I asked, I'm sorry, pastor, your Muslim neighbor is your friend? No. He's your relative? No. 
Why you pray eight hours per day for your neighbor? And he touched and broke my heart. He said, you know, Slavic, because I love my neighbor. Now why we do not see revival? Because in the last days, Bible said, will be a lot of sin on earth. And through this sin, people will lost it first love. Why revival do not come? Because we lost it first love. We lost it power of righteousness, power of holiness. Somebody said, you know, Savik, we try to invite people to church. But they're not thirsty. My answer is, why not thirsty? Giving to your neighbor one pound of salt, S-A-L-T. And after salt, they will be thirsty. If one pound doesn't work, make double portion, two pounds. After salt, they will be thirsty. When we lost the power of salt, they're not thirsty. But when we will be salt, people will be thirsty. Now my message, wake up America and ask for forgiveness and ask for revival. And pastor pray eight hours per day for salvation. Three years later, I came to the same place. Because in Asia, you cannot call, you cannot fax, you cannot email, you cannot inform. Then you are coming. Secret. Persecution. I came secretly. From airport, fly all night, by taxi, I'm coming to this church. When I came to this church... I stopped by taxi, in taxi. I stopped because thousands of young people block all road. And driver said to me, maybe some funeral going on here because a lot of young people I never saw before. I said, okay, no problem. I know where is this place. I pay and I walk. It was a church. People block all road, all highways in this church. When pastor saw me, he said, come Slavic and preach. Here in America, you have to call in advance. Mr. President Donald and First Lady Melania, I want to come and speak at your church. You have to call one month, two months, six months in advance. But in the former Soviet Union, when you come here today, okay, take it microphone and preach. We don't have different, we have different system. I'm sorry, I'm, I do not to do something wrong against American program, but in Ukraine, you know, in Central Asia. Okay, he saw me. He have a program, he have a plan. He said, come, we know you're a preacher. I took a microphone and started to preach. Forty people get saved. And he said, now 10 minutes coffee break. Drink coffee, second service. You have to preach. Maybe 80 people get saved. After second service, third one. He said, Slavic, you have to preach. I preached third one. A lot of people get saved. And he said, now we have two hours break. Because after two hours, we'll be number four service. I asked, Pastor, what happened? It was only 40 people. Now he said, over six or 8,000 people in a few years. And after third service, one man, very intelligent. See, he was 60 and above. He came to me and he said, Slavic, maybe you're tired. I said, yes. Can you come to my home? My wife prepared very good meat with rice. You have to eat at my home. I went to his home with pastor. When I was sitting in his living room, he brought water on the basin. He put water and brought to my room. And he said, we have a special custom in our Muslim country. I have to wash your feet. I have no choice. I take off my socks, my shoes, my socks. He stayed by knees and he stay, started to wash my, hand, my, my feet. During washing time, he prayed, Lord Jesus, bless this missionary to travel to many nations and preach in good news. Thank you, Jesus, you brought him to my place and I receive your salvation. Do you know who was this intelligent man, general of the Soviet army? Who am I? When just a few years ago, police people, generals and army arrest me. They put me to jail. I was sleeping on the floor on the cement. Cement was very cold. Four of us in jail, day after day, week after week. And now general washing my feet. Because the Bible has a power to change a general heart. <laughs> Pastor wrestled with God. He prayed, Lord, I need revival in my country. Muslim nation. Now we want to see revival. We have to pray to God. From that time, Jesus said, 
Now harvest is ready, but labors are few. Two thousand years, his voice labors for you. Harvest is ready, but labors are few. And Jacob wrestled with God. One hour, two hours, five hours. And he saw sun. It started up, coming up, breaking the day. And he said to him, let me go. No, let me go. No, let me go. No, I cannot let you go until you bless me. I'm sorry. Jacob, you said you just passing this creek with nothing. And now you have a lot of blessing. And now you said, no, I need a blessing. Because, listen to me very carefully. If God have a program to do something in your life. And your spiritual battle is empty or dirty. He has to prepare you. And when he saw seriously God are going to use in Jacob. Because from Jacob salvation came. Because Jacob became Israel. From Israel salvation came to our lives. He had to prepare his spiritual battle. Because he saw his dirt inside. He walked right and left. Day after day. Year after day. With one name Jacob. And he said to him. Just come to third step. Call. What is your name? I'm sorry. Oh my God, you do not know my name? You do, not who, you do not know who am I? Bible said, before I was born, God saw when God created my bones in my mother's tomb. And now you ask, who wrestling with you? Oh Lord, you do not know me? Yes, you know. You know why he asked this question? What is your name? Because 20 years ago when his father was blind and Jacob took and used his brother robe and clothes. He walked to his father. He was intent. And father asked, what is your name, my son? Because if I put down my right hand and bless you, you will be blessed. And your, gen, you, you know, your uh, uh, people, children, grandchildren, all gen gender... Uh, Generations will be blessed. What is your name? And he remember when he said to his father, I am Esau. What, what, what? I hear accent. You are not Esau. You are Jacob. No, no, no. I am Esau. And he walked with this name of Jacob for 20 years. Now, if you did something wrong for 10 or 20 years ago and nobody know, only God, for you one way, come to the front, come to the Calvary and say, Jesus, I am a sinner, forgive me, no other way. What is your name? And he said, you know, she wrestled with God. He stay not before his natural father, but he stay before father above all fathers mighty God. And he said my Lord I am Jacob means liar. And God said to him before because you are telling truth you are Jacob. Let's go to four steps. It's called change name. And he said now no more Jacob but Israel. Let's open registration book and angels will come and witness. We don't need to go to city court. We don't need to go to mayor of the city. We don't need to ask him for senator or congressman. We are witnessing you are no more Jacob but Israel. Because you wrestle with God. And now from Israel all nations will be blessed. And salvation will come through Jesus from Bethlehem. From Israel. Ha! Hey, something happened. Your name no more longer called Jacob, but Israel. Pastor, do you have a few minutes or not? 
Keep going. Is the Russian time? Two more hours? Just a few more minutes and we will pray. In 10 years when I came here, maybe a little bit longer will stay. Forgive me, please. But this is very important. When one time I was in Israel, I met with assistant to prime minister. You know, they check all my background. Who am I? Before they allowed for me to go through fourth security to second floor or so, or so and talk to assistant to prime minister. I have a chance. God opened the door for me. During this meeting with him and talking with him, after half hour, he said to me, hush, please, young man. And he called somewhere and started talking in Hebrew. I said, I'm sorry, I do not understand Hebrew. We just use English between us. I said, are you calling to police to arrest me because I'm preaching to you about Jesus? He said, no, don't worry. I'm calling now to television station. I order prime time for you at 6 p.m. You have to come to television and preach for all nation. I said, sir, you do not know me. He said, half hour is enough to feel your spirit. Don't come late. I came early. And ladies took me to some room and ma put makeup. Or uh, this right? Yeah, makeup. Ladies, makeup, right? Put makeup. And they put me to some room. He showed me five, four, three, two, one. And he say, said, you are on air. And they started to preach from the Bible. And I said, my father gave me my name, a Slavic. But who given to you name Israel? Not mine, not daddy, not mom, but God is mighty. One way, when and why? When Jacob went to the mountain and wrestled with God. And now my advice to you people in Israel. Find your room. Find your mountain. And pray to God. And God will protect and give a peace to Jerusalem. And send blessing to you. Because Jacob wrestled with God. And he changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And number five is a blessing. Step number is a blessing. What is blessing for us? Ten dollars per hour is a blessing. Now boss invite you said, hey, 20 you have. It's a big blessing. You have two children. Now somebody said, oh, your wife is pregnant with number four twins. Oh, you're blessing. But how God has blessed Jacob? Bible said, Jacob walked to the mountain like here. Ein, zwei, one, two, uno, dos, adin, dva. But he walked from the mountain like this. Like this, because God touched his hip and he walked like this. Oh Lord, this is not a blessing. Sometimes God creates problem for us and tears from our eye is a blessing except from his hand. We don't know why, but it's happening. It's a blessing. Accept this blessing from him. God has blessed Jacob. And now one more, one more testimony and we are going to pray. Now I have a chance to study in Ukraine and have my doctor degree. But in the former Soviet Union was not possible. Impossible. Study to come to church. We live in village and we walk to the church 15 kilometers, 10 miles one way, 4 o'clock in the morning, 4 times a week to attend the church in our country under communism until 1987 when freedom came. I remember it was no education. I was like my son David. It's only around 20s. But I was a fat preacher. Anointing from God. And one lady came to me and she said, Slavic, in this village three hours away we have some problem. Can you take somebody, go and pray? I invite two brothers and we drove to this place three hours. Usually when we came in, what we are saying, knocking the door and said, peace be to you, can we come in, right? Praise God or something, hallelujah. They opened the door and I saw a lady, very intelligent, and man with ties staying like this. I asked, this is right place? They said, yes, you are in the right place. I asked, do you invite us for pray? She said, yes. I asked for what? And she said, did you see our child a so small bed on the floor? I, I saw a boy, three years of age. His eyes closed. I said, what happened? 
And she said, he's sick. He was in hospital in Kiev, capital. And doctors invited me and said, you are from high position people. Take it his home because he is dying in two weeks. We don't want to be a guilty. I asked, are you Christian? She said, no, I'm communist. What about your husband? He is a director of the factory. And he's not a Christian. We are atheists. I said, do you attend the church? She said, no church in our village. Do you read the Bible? She said, I never saw in my life a Bible. This is the situation when we came in. And I just turned around. I saw in left side, maybe 28 people staying like this. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked for a lady who they are. And she said, it's our relatives. They came to see how you're going to heal my child. I said, what happened with your child? And she said, we don't know. But his eye was closed every 10 minutes. You know, his body shaking and face changed to different colors. And she said, when we was going to take it, my son to our home, one nurse came and whispered into my ear saying, if you know some Christian, please invite them to pray for child. Maybe God will help you. And she said, just come and heal my child. What we have to do, Pastor Donald? What? We have to say, I'm sorry, you have to repent, first one. You have to accept Jesus, and maybe later we can pray. I'm telling you, anointed people never move back, and we have no choice. I said, you want to see your child be healed? Yes. And these people? Yes. I said, now we are going to invite his name and wrestle with God for this child. When we came to this child, I was only 20 like my son David. And I stayed by knees with my two brothers, friends. We lay hands like Bible said and pray for this child. It was a prayer meeting for one hour. We were wet. We were tired. We were thirsty. And my husband and wife just staying like this and watching. And behind quiet, silent, just watching. We pray second hour. We pray, we pray three hours. We wrestle with God. Lord, you know where we are. You know condition of this family. You know this situation. You know this child. God, we need you. After three hours, we were overtired. We stood up. We tried to talk together. And we said to one to another one, what we have to do? Stop to pray? Because every 10 minutes, his body was shaking and no result at all. We have to stop or we have to continue. This is question to you. Continue. When you said continue to pray, I'm asking now, why you stop to pray for your family? Why you stop to pray for revival in America? Why you stop to pray for Congress? Why you stop to pray for president? Why you stop to pray for your county? Why you stop to pray for your city? Why? And we made decision. We cannot stop until we see result. When we made decision like this, God is watching. And just walk. And we stay by knees and put hand again for this child. And we pray. And immediately I heard behind me noise. Big noising. I stop. I just turned around and I saw 28 people standing by knees and lifting up hands and praying. Nobody in white and somebody praying different languages. And we pray for this child. Only maybe three, four minutes, no more. And child stood up and son walked to his mom first time in six months, lifting up his eyes and said, Mommy, I'm hungry. Because we wrestle with God. We pray to God about His power to be in action. More than 20, maybe 25 years later, I took my American friends from Chicago. And we traveled and preached in different places in Ukraine. It was my American friends. When I stood up before three, on the front of 3,000 people and started to preach, I recognized over 25 years ago what happened nearby. And I told this story to all congregation, what I'm telling you now. During my message, very tall man ran to me 
during my message he stopped my preaching and he gave a hug for me like American people hold it of me I lifted up my eye and from his eye he was very tall tears comes and drop off into my cheeks I asked sir I'm sorry let me finish my message do you need some something do you need some to pray or you have some request to pray and he said no he said I was looking for you for over 20 years because I am this child and now I'm a preacher my family I have a boy and all relatives now belongs to Jesus they are members of the churches not because of I or my two brothers because of Jesus when we wrestle with God when we pray and ask Lord we need to transfer ladies and gentlemen revival coming to America answer coming to your family God will answer your prayer never give up because devil tried to destroy it but never because God built church and never never hell against a church hallelujah hallelujah let's stand up together lifting up your voice let's pray let's pray lifting up your voice lifting up your voice lifting us let's pray like people in Africa let's pray like people in Ukraine lifting up your voice maybe like never before because today is a day when all people glorify his name shouting Hosanna but Jesus is here by Holy Spirit lifting up your voice please let's pray let's pray 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 for your people. Pray for your neighbors. Pray for salvation. Pray for healing. Pray for power of the Holy Spirit. Pray for America. Pray for your neighbors. Pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lifting up your voice. Lifting up. Lifting up your voice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is here by Holy Spirit. He invites you to come to this Sunday. Palm Sunday. Everybody now celebrate his day when he come into Jerusalem. Now he's coming to your heart. Now he's coming to your life. Now he's coming to your family. Now he's coming to America back because God will reward your bless his blessing to America lifting up your voice please please lifting up your voice open your mouth and pray and pray like Jesus in Gethsemane like Jesus pray his prayer with his people in prayer room let's pray let's pray let's pray Jesus we want to wrestle with you now we not let you go until you bless you until you answer my prayer hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord my God I want to ask for you as evangelist if you now need some touching from God, if you ask Him for forgiveness, one drop of His blood, or some healing, on something for your spirit, your, your flesh, your body, your family, and you need some special prayer, I don't know. We have just time now for one prayer. If you come to the front, we'll pray. Pastor Donald, can you provide this prayer, please? Yes, hallelujah. Oh, we got this. Hallelujah. Come on, church. I'm going to invite us all. Come. If you, but you need special prayer, just come to the center here this morning. Maybe you don't need to know Jesus as Lord and Savior today. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, today is the day. Hallelujah. I don't know you get a clearer message of hope. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. we got this opportunity right now, church. There's nothing more important out there than what God's doing right here in this 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 audience hallelujah hallelujah i want you to come if you have special needs come special needs come we've got some up here this morning hallelujah come this morning come on come on don't miss an opportunity yes you know because no. tomorrow it will be yes. not your day now you feel something you need touching from god you need answer from him yes you need His healing. You need His mercy. You need His forgiveness. Yes. Now it's time. We'll yes. pray together because yes. the Bible said yes. when two or three together, my people will pray. Yes. I will answer because yes. now it's time to wrestle with God. Yes. Let's let's pray yes. together for come a few on. minutes. Come, 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 Hallelujah. come. If you need Hallelujah. something, if I will be in your shoes, I will run to the front because I need something from God. If you need from God, from God, we cannot give unto you anything. We cannot. But Jesus, yes. Lifting up your voice. Close your eye. Let's pray. Let's pray. 
pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Come, 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 come. Do not be ashamed. Let's come. Let's come. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. You got time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's no more important than this moment right now. An appointment with God. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to our Faith Family Church podcast. We pray you were richly blessed and encouraged by what you heard. If you would like to give to our church and ministries, please visit our website, ffcackworth.com slash give. Thank you so much again for listening.